Praise the Lord. It's another Friday, and once again, we are gathered together to receive from the Word of the Lord. Who among you are excited just to be receiving the Word of the Lord today? Amen. So just before we get into the Word, you want to welcome everyone. If this will be your first time to tune in to our, to our online gathering, you want to welcome you. We want you to know that we are so pleased that you are here with us celebrating your Friday, celebrating your weekend. Amen. So I believe also that those who are continually watching us every single week, we want also you to know that we are so glad that you could continue to be in fellowship with us, even if we're just doing it online. Amen. And so before we get into the word, may I invite everyone to just be in the attitude of prayer as we pray. Let's all be praying. Father, we thank you, Lord. We declare, Lord God, that today is indeed the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, O Lord. Because, Father, we believe, Lord, that you have called people today for a purpose and that you will fulfill its purpose, O Lord. Father, even we pray, Lord God, for the word that everyone will be receiving today. Father, we declare, may everyone, Lord, receive a, a holy impartation. May everyone take his own portion, God. May you continue to speak, Lord God, to everyone. Speak to their areas of their lives, Lord, that need to hear this. We declare, Lord, that we are captured by your word and your word alone. And we rebuke any works of the enemy. And we declare that after this afternoon, O Lord, we will not be held back anymore. That we will, Lord Jesus, so walk in obedience with you. I pray for your anointing to envelop me right now. May that, Lord God, may it be, Lord God, that only your word shall be heard. Only your word shall be preached. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. So, once again, good afternoon. If you have been here with us following our following our weekly fellowship, we want you to know that it's about time. It's almost our anniversary. Amen. And this will be the first time that we will be doing an anniversary online. And if you've been with us the moment I preached about Terra, we've learned so much about being in the halfway. Amen. And even though we have already discussed it, the word of the Lord just keeps on impressing on me on that, on that very topic of being held back. So today I want us to discuss about about the book of Exodus, wherein the Israelites were already were already being captured. No, not really captured. They are being enslaved by the Egyptians. Amen. And so let's let's see how how can we see ourselves in their situation. Is there a similar similarity between their situation and our situation at the moment? And what do we learn from it? How do we overcome it? Amen. So I would be reading first to give you a, to give you a brief background on what was happening in the lives of the Israelites at that time when the book of Exodus was 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 beginning. So we will be reading here from the book of Exodus chapter 1 verses 8 onwards. The word of the Lord says, "Then a new king began to rule Egypt. He did not know Joseph. This king said to his people, "Look at the Israelites there are too many of them, and they are stronger than we are. We must make plans to stop them from growing stronger, because if there is a war, they might join our enemies, defeat us, and escape from the land. So before we continue reading further, most of the time, the Bible uses Pharaoh as, as a picture, as a symbolism of the enemy. Amen? And, and the Israelites are symbolic of the Christians nowadays. So we can see here, just like how Pharaoh has been oppressing the Israelites, we also could agree that the devil has also been oppressing the children of God. Amen? The enemy has been putting bondages, the enemy has been putting strongholds, and it's just oppressing us. It's limiting us. Amen? But the word of the Lord, as what we have read in the in chapter in verses 8 until 10, the word of the Lord is telling us clearly that the enemy, the Pharaoh at that time, was so threatened when Christians, when the Israelites were beginning to grow. So let me tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. You are a threat to the enemy. Amen. If you have someone sitting next beside you, look at that person and begin to see and begin to say that he or she is also a threat to the enemy. Amen. So, it, because, because the enemy wants to oppress us, he, the enemy wants to stop us because he knows that the moment we have a realization of our full potential, we are a threat to him. 
So the enemy would try to divert us. The enemy would try to blind us from who we really are so that we will not be a threat to him. Amen. Because what is Genesis 1.28? What is that? What is that anointing that the Lord has given to Adam? We can read from there in verse 28 of Genesis 1. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So, so man was given this anointing. Man was given this authority to rule over and to multiply. Amen. And that's what the enemy hates. When the children of God are multiplying, when the children of God are ruling over and are having dominion, when the children of God are going into its original design, the enemy hates it. So the enemy will do his best to oppress so that we cannot see who we really are, so that we cannot go to the original design that God has for us. Because one thing is for sure, one thing is true, the enemy is scared of you. Amen. We should not be the one being afraid of the enemy. The enemy should be the one being afraid of us. And in fact, he does. The word of the Lord in, in Exodus says that. That they are, that they are the, 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 the Pharaoh saw that the Israelites are growing stronger. And that is threatening them. Amen. And the enemy will try to threaten us. The enemy will try to intimidate us. How? By oppression. How? By making us see the wrong image of ourselves. Even in Luke 10, 19, there's a very powerful anointing and authority given to us. Even Jesus is saying, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will endure you. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? that we are given the authority over the enemy. Have a change of mindset today. If you think that the enemy has control over you, the word, the word of the Lord is telling you right now to wake up because there is an authority given to you. And that is the authority of what? Of ruling over, of having dominion. Amen. So what did the Pharaoh do at that time in the book of Exodus? In chapter, in verse 11, we would read, These masters forced the Israelites to build the cities of Python and Ramesses for the king. The king used the cities to store grain and other things. The Egyptians forced the Israelites to work harder and harder. But the harder they worked, the more they grew and spread and the more the Egyptians became afraid of them. So the Egyptians made them work even harder. Amen. So that the Israelites will stop growing, what did the Pharaoh do? He began to oppress them, made them do forced labor without pay, slavery, so that it would become to, to be instilled in their heads that they are slaves and they cannot do more. If you're being enslaved right now, God wants you to break free from that mindset. Don't have the slave of a mindset. Don't have the mindset of a slave. Amen. Because it is not how God designed you to be. God designed you to rule over, to have authority. May it sink into us right now. Amen. As I read in further, it says, They made life hard for the Israelites. They forced the Israelites to work hard at making bricks and mortar and to work hard in the fields. So the Israelites, they were enslaved. They were in bondage. They cannot do what they wanted to do because they were oppressed. Are you also in that situation right now? When you think that life is so hard, life begins, life is becoming harder and harder for you, much more with the situation that we are in right now. One problem comes after the next and after the next and after the next. Are you being enslaved? Because if so, maybe there's a Pharaoh. Maybe there's something that's stopping you. Maybe there's a bondage. Maybe there's an open door wherein the enemy has the power to rule over. And God wants us to be set free today. Amen. So what did the Israelites do? The Israelites, 
they cried out to God. And that's what we're supposed to do. We cry out to God. We come to God rather than, rather than murmuring, rather than ranting. We should come to God and cry out to God. And then we can see what happened in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. Then the Lord said, I have seen the troubles my people have suffered in Egypt, and I have heard their cries when the Egyptians hurt them. I know about their pain. Wow, what an amazing God. He knows your pain. If ever you're in right now, here listening to this, to this preaching, and you think that nobody knows your pain, nobody knows your battle, receive this word. God is telling you, I know your pain. I understand your pain. I see what you're going through. And then the word of the Lord says in verse 8, Now I will go down and save my people from the Egyptians. I will take them from that land and lead them to a good land where they can be free from these troubles. That is the plan of God for us. We have a God who rescues, mga kapatid. We have a God who wants to take us out from slavery, who wants to take us out from bondage so that we can be in a good land where we can be free from these troubles. Amen. It also says, it is a land filled with good, with many good things. Many different people lived in that land. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. I have heard the cries of the Israelites, and I have seen the way the Egyptians have made life hard for them. So we can see here, we have a God who is concerned, we have a God who is involved, and we have a God who rescues us when we cry unto Him. Mga kapatid. So it is very important that we have this heart to cry out before the Lord. So, so in a nutshell, what did God do? God, God called, gave a calling to Moses that Moses will be the deliverer of his people. Amen. And God commanded Moses to talk to Pharaoh. God commanded Moses to ask Pharaoh to let the Israelites go and worship him in the wilderness. But what does Pharaoh do? Amen. What does he actually do? In, verse, in Exodus chapter 8, verse 25, the word of the Lord says, Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. There were many, there were many conversations that happened. There were plagues that happened. At first, it was it, the, the heart of Pharaoh was so hard that, that he didn't want the Israelites to go. But when he saw plagues coming in, he called Moses and Aaron and told them, Go, sacrifice to your God. But take note of this, within the land. What does that mean? What does that connote? Within the land. It's like Pharaoh was, was telling Moses, You know what? Let's make a deal. You can serve your God, but you don't have to leave Egypt to do it. Serve the Lord Worship the Lord, but do it here. Remember who's saying this. It's Pharaoh who was saying this. Meaning, the enemy could allow you to, quote-unquote, worship, but you don't really need to leave. Amen. Are we getting it? The enemy will, will, will allow you to go, but really don't leave the land. The enemy wants to still have a hold of us. The enemy is telling us, okay, go ahead, go serve, quote and quote, serve your God, but don't leave your bondages, don't leave your favorite sin, do it here. The word of the, 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 the word of the enemy is just like that. Go serve, but still stay. Stay in the wrong relationship. Go to church on a, on a Friday, but stay in the wrong relationship. Go go to church on a Tuesday. But stay on your homosexuality. Go to church on a Sunday, but but be a worldly Christian. Don't don't be. Don't stand out. Amen. Isn't that 
you can serve but continue compromising don't leave it the enemy does not want us to be separated from him that's what he was telling Moses and Aaron do it in the land how about you right now are you worshiping God in the land of the enemy are you worshiping God but after that you would still go back home to your favorite sin whatever that may be are you still going back to your vices are you still going back to your fornication are you still going back to your adultery are you still going back is it just for the show amen may we have a realization right now where am i am i still in the land of the enemy but you know what moses did not give in he did not give in to the compromise he did not give in to the negotiation because pharaoh was negotiating okay i will allow you to do so but do it here in egypt the enemy would also be negotiating with you okay do this but with me do this but in me still you are mine so what does verse 27 say he said let us go three days into the desert and offer sacrifices to the lord our god this is what he told us to do so moses was very strong his conviction was very strong he was telling he was telling pharaoh no we cannot do it in your terms we will do it in god's terms in verse 28 which is our main key verse for this afternoon so pharaoh said i will let you go and offer sacrifices to the lord your god in the desert but you must not go very far now go and pray for me the title of this preaching not very far the places where the enemy would allow you to step into but won't allow you to get too far into reading back on verse 28 at this time the pharaoh already permitted them to go and offer sacrifices but do not go very far if he could not keep us in the land he would keep us near the land when, when I was telling you that maybe you're still in the land of the enemy, maybe you could say, you know what, Pastor, I'm not there anymore. Well, then, good, good. You're not there. But have you went far enough? Or have you stayed near to it? That it will just be convenient for you to go back anytime. Are there still contacts in your phone book? that the Lord has been clearly telling you to delete but still it's there now so that when it's convenient it's easy for you to call that person again has there been people that the Lord has been telling you to block yourself from but you didn't you said Lord okay I will not be in relationship with that person anymore but I will not block that person just in case it becomes convenient hello you went out you stepped out but didn't go very far you're still in the wrong place my friend one more if he could keep us if he could not keep us in the land he would keep us near the land the enemy will try us avoid extremes wag mong itodo kapatid sobra ka namang kristyano the enemy will begin to whisper that to us. Chillax ka lang, relax lang. Wag masyado, 50-50 lang. Amen? Don't be a fanatical, chill ka lang. Be a borderline believer. Be safe but don't stand out too much. Wag masyadong magpahalata na kristyano ka. The enemy would whisper that. That is the enemy telling you, Okay, I will let you go but don't go too far. But the word of the Lord is the, the Lord wants us to go far. The Lord wants us to go really far away from the enemy and near to him, close to him, be with him and be in him. Amen. 
And that is what the enemy does until till date, until today. But may it be that as you are listening to this very preaching right now, that you will decide to step out of that land. To step out of that land that is still near the enemy. Be an all-out Christian. Be an evident Christian. Yung halatang Christian no hindi nagtatago, hindi nagiging secret agent Christian. Amen. Because you know what the enemy will do? Pinaparamdam niya sa atin na lumaya na tayo pero as long as we are not all out, as long as he can still see us, as long as he still has a hold on us, even how small that would be, you know what? The enemy is not threatened. The enemy will never be threatened of Christians who will not go all out. The enemy will never be threatened of Christians who he still has a who still he has a hold on to. As long as you don't go very far, the enemy is still winning over our lives. Remember, Tara, he didn't go as far. He should have been in Canaan. But maybe, just maybe, it was the enemy telling him, you know what, don't go too far from Ur. Haran would be a good place. But that's not the place where God called us to be. You are not called to be in the place of borderline. You are not supposed to be in the border, mga kapatid. There are also people in the Bible who didn't give it their all. Who didn't give, who didn't go all out. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Let me just read. There was a man named Ananias. His wife's name was Sapphira. Ananias sold some land he had, but he gave only part of the money to the apostles. He secretly kept some of the money for himself, and his wife knew this, and she agreed with it. Peter said, Ananias, why did you let Satan fill your mind with such an idea? You kept part of the money for yourself and lied about it to the Holy Spirit. Let's stop there. There was a good intention for, for the couple Ananias and Sapphira to sell their land. They were seeing, they, because this was the time wherein, wherein the Christians were giving everything that they have and nobody was in need in the church. They were seeing it happening and maybe they got moved as well. So they decided to sell everything that they have. The land, not everything, the land that they have. But then they didn't give the revenue of that land, the income, or the earning of that land fully. The word of the Lord said, he secretly kept some of the money for himself. My question, mga kapatid, are you still keeping some? Are you keeping a portion to yourself? Not just in your finances, but in your talents, in your availability, in your ability. Are you just keep are you still keeping some for yourself? And the word of the Lord says here that Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit. Because nobody would even know whether you give it your all or not, except you and the Lord. You could make it appear that you're already giving your all. But you cannot mock the Holy Spirit. Amen? It says here, before you sold the field, it belonged to you, right? And even after you sold it, you could have used the money any way you wanted. How could you even think of doing such a thing? You lied to God, not to us. We could make it appear that we are all out, but we're not. We may lie to people, but we cannot lie to God. We cannot, we cannot just make a show na ito na yung best ko, when God knows that it's not. And what happened? When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. Some young men came and wrapped his body. They carried it out and buried it. And everyone who heard about this was filled with fear. As we read along, we know that what happened to his wife, the same thing. Why? Because they held back. They didn't go very far of giving it their all. They held back. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to hold back. He wants you to take hold of something and not really giving it all. But God is not pleased when we do that. Amen. So going back. They didn't go as far as giving everything because you know what why did this become a sin because this is in direct contrast with what god is commanding us to do 
the greatest commandments if you remember those what does it say love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the verse could have just said, with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, with your strength. But God clearly said, with all. Because for God, it's all or nothing, mga kapatid. You cannot give 50% of your heart and 50% of it to the world. God will not be pleased with it. God wants your all. Amen. Even in Exodus chapter 22, verse 29, this is what the Lord says. You are not to hold back the fullness of your harvest and the outflow of your wine presses you are to give me the firstborn of your sons god should always be the first in our lives i'm not telling you not to have not to not to work anymore and not to not to take care of your family anymore but it should be god who will be there first and never to hold back tell yourself right now do not hold back go far amen only you and God will know whether you are really giving your all, giving your best, loving with all of you. Amen. So going back in Exodus chapter 8, verse 28, Pharaoh said, I will let you go, but don't go very far. Then let me discuss to you, there are areas in our lives that the enemy do not really want us to go too far. First, evangelism. The enemy don't want, does not want us to go so far in evangelism. The enemy wants to hide the gospel. Mga kapatid, ayaw ng kaaway na mandamay ka pa ng iba. Ayaw ng kaaway na, na mandamay ka pa na may iba pang maging kristyano dahil sa evangelism na gagawin mo o dahil sa testimony mo. The enemy works to keep us from sharing it. That's why the enemy will tell you, hindi din makikinig sa iyo yan. Ire-reject ka lang yan. The enemy will begin to tell you, um, magkakaproblema ka lang pag ginawa mo yan, baka hulihin ka pa. He will begin to inject thoughts in our head. He puts us, he puts us under the impression of fear, under the impression of shame. Take note of this. Satan doesn't mind the gospel. He doesn't mind it. Don't get me wrong. He doesn't mind it as long as it is hidden in the walls of the church. Makakapag-relax ang kaaway, mga kapatid, kung meron ka nga gospel, pero ikaw lang. Nasa simbahan lang. As long as hindi lumalabas ang gospel out of the church, the enemy can relax. But it would only be a threat to the enemy. When you begin to go out and share the word of God to others, when you begin to evangelize to others, when you begin to share your testimony to others, you know what? It will not bother the enemy as long as the gospel stays in you and you don't spill it out. As long as your gospel is affecting only you, it's fine with him. Hanggat hindi ka nang dadamay ng, ka ng iba, okay lang yun sa kaaway mga kapatid. As long as your gospel doesn't take you too far, you can have it. As long as, your dos- as long as your gospel does not carry you anywhere, it's fine with the devil. The enemy is telling you right now, you may have the gospel, but as long as you don't go very far, I don't care. Yes, you know the truth. Yes, you have the word of the Lord in you, but the enemy will not care about it as long as you don't go very far. How far? By sharing to others. How far? By, by, by sharing your testimony, by inviting others in the fellowship in the Lord. The enemy does not even want us to save our families. The enemy doesn't want us to share the gospel to our families. Because you know what? In, in Exodus chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, this is another negotiation that the, en- that the Pharaoh was doing with Moses. What does it say? So Pharaoh told his officials to bring Moses and Aaron back to him. Pharaoh said to them, Go and worship the Lord your God. Again, he's allowing him them to. But tell me, who just who is going? Moses answered, 
all of our people, young and old, will go, and we will take our sons and daughters and our sheep and cattle with us. We will all go because the Lord's festival, festival is for all of us. You see the heart of Moses? It's all, not partial. He didn't say only this and this will go. He said, I will bring my family, I will bring my friends, I will bring my neighbors, I will bring my relatives, even the, even, even the flock, we will bring them. Because that festival is for all of us. But listen to what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said to them, the Lord really will have to be with you before I let you and all of your children leave Egypt. Look, you are planning something evil. The man can go worship the Lord. That is what you asked for in the beginning. But all of your people cannot go. Then Pharaoh sent Moses and Aaron away. What is this telling us? The enemy does not want us to bring our family with us. He doesn't even want our children to grow in the fear of God. That's why he was telling us, Kung, oh, sige, mag-worship kayo, kayo lang. Iwan nyo na yung mga anak nyo. Let them be. The enemy does not want us to bring our children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That's what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And the enemy does not want that. The enemy wants you to leave your child behind. But let me tell you this, our children should be the seed to the generation. If you are here, you're listening, your first ministry is your children, is your family. Amen po. So, so with all humility, I am praising the Lord for the life of my daughter. I can really see how she is growing in the fear of God. We kept on declaring upon her that she will be the seed to her generation. And even at her, at her, at her early age, she's just almost three. But we can see how, how that conviction is upon her life. The moment that she's that she's just seeing see, that she's seeing Pastor Rico doing the opening prayer, she would automatically raise her hand. She's singing worship songs. She's shouting, "Jesus, I love you." She even told me once, "I need God in my life." She's just almost three. Amen. So if you are here, bring your family along. We're always praying na sana may makapag-evangelize sa family ko, but you are there for a purpose, kapatid. Do the first step. Don't allow the enemy to tell you, don't go very far of saving your family. Ikaw lang, okay na yun, huwag mo nang idamay sila. Don't go too far in, 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 in sharing to your neighbor, huwag mo nang idamay sila. Ikaw na lang. But don't allow that. Be an all-out Christian when it comes to evangelism. Amen. The second thing that the enemy wants us not to go so far, fellowship. Let's read in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25. We should think about each other to see how we can encourage each other to show love and do good works. We must not quit meeting together as some are doing. No. We need to keep on encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer. Take note, the word of the Lord says, not quit meeting together. The COVID really caused us to stop from meeting each other physically. But praise God for the technology. Praise God that it happened at this point where there's a technology that we can still connect with each other even though we're not physically together. But I really believe that's the enemy's device, not for us not to come together. He wants, he does not want us to go too far in fellowshipping with each other. All we have to do right now is just to sit down and worship online. Again, worship online. Not watch. Yung iba para nala kasi nanonood ng palabas eh, kulang nalang magpopcorn. Baka nga matindi, may iba nagpapopcorn talaga. Habang nagwe-worship. Hindi mo naman yan ginagawa sa physical church eh. But you're doing it in the online church. Online na nga lang eh. The sad thing is, things are now very convenient and comfortable that only a few are truly worshiping. Some are just watching. Some are just even watching 
but not really listening. Yung nanunood siya pero wala dun yung kaluluwa niya. Wala siyang naintindihan, wala siyang nagets. Sadly, some people are more interested in watching Netflix, K-pop. Some just don't care care anymore. Only very few are truly worshiping. Maybe na nakikinig ka ngayon. You know what? This is online, but please worship. Huwag ka namang maglaba habang nag-worship. Hindi mo naman ginagawa yan sa totoong, sa physical church, di ba? Huwag ka namang magluto habang nag-worship. Hindi mo din naman yan ginagawa sa physical church. What makes you think that it's different? When we are worshiping in spirit and in truth. I challenge you. Worship in spirit and in truth. Because the moment you fail to listen, you fail to receive the word of God. You fail to receive the truth. You fail, you fail to receive the word that might just change you. Maybe that's the enemy's way of telling you, don't go too far. Just sit down, but don't listen. Just sit down, don't pay attention. I will let you go attend, but don't listen. It is my prayer that the enemy will not have victory over you. Because today you will decide to worship. Amen. You will not just watch. You will worship. You will not just watch. You will listen. You will not stay in the land of the enemy. You will participate and you will decide, I will go far. Because Satan doesn't mind superficial fellowship. That kind of fellowship doesn't even bother the devil. Para bang tinitinan ka ng kaaway oh. Hindi naman totoo yan. Panlabas lang yan. May it be not you. You can go into fellowship but don't go too far. That's the enemy whispering to you. Amen. The second thing, again. The enemy doesn't want us to go too far in fellowship. That's what I've mentioned, online fellowship. But in the same way, the enemy does not want us to be in the kind of fellowship where we become accountable to one another. He doesn't want you to be in that kind of fellowship wherein you can just really open up your struggles to others. The enemy would rather want you to stay in isolation because he knows in isolation, you would be an easier target. Do you have an accountability partner? Do you have someone that you can just open up to so that that someone can pray over you? Or are you just telling him, hindi, ako lang at ang Panginoon? Yeah, it's true. But we also need people to be with us as we journey along. We always say, we are better together. Have someone who would look at the, si at the things in your life that you fail to see. Those blind sides in your life, have, have that heart, have that heart to, to reach out. Are you opening up to your leaders? Are you opening up to your pastors? Are you opening up to your accountability partners? Because if not, that's the devil telling you, don't go too far. The, because you know what? The, the devil does not mind you going into fellowship. Just don't go too far. He doesn't want more than a handshake. <laughs> o oh, hanggang handshake lang. Huwag ka nang makihalubilo. Hi, hello lang. Huwag ka nang makihalubilo. Don't share your life. Don't open up. But if your fellowship is deeper, more loving, more concerned, that's the time that the enemy is threatened. That's the time that the enemy will be so angry at you. In fellowship, and the enemy wants you to just be superficial, mga kapatid. But don't allow the enemy to do that to you. Dig deeper. Build relationship with others in the church. Have an accountability partner. Have a prayer partner. Amen. The third area in your life that the enemy wants you not to go too far is ministry. If you would remember last week, Pastor Rico mentioned that we need to elevate our church motto from being every believer 
must be a worker. To being every believer must be a leader. That is a reminder of us to really push, to not stay on one level of our lives. We have to push, we have to go far. Amen? As long as you're just doing a worship service three times a day, three times a week, I'm sorry, that's fine. The enemy would say, Tama na yan, that's far enough. Mag-attend ka ng midweek, mag-attend ka ng Friday, mag-attend ka ng prayer meeting. But stop there, that's too far already. Don't go farther. Amen. The enemy is threatened when your ministry begins to become more personal. The enemy, the enemy is threatened when you stop doing ministry and start being ministry. Because for the enemy, that's just too far. You may be doing ministry, okay, papahay ang kaaway, okay, mag-ministry ka. As long as you don't do it excellently, okay lang ako doon. As long as you don't go too far. Huwag mo masyadong dibdibin. Huwag mo masyadong isa puso. Ganun ka lang, props ka lang. No. That's what the enemy wants. But clearly, that is not what God wants. Because God wants all. Amen. When you decide that you are going to be God's hands, extending and reaching out to the oppressed, the enemy would say, that's too far. Kagastos ka pa. Magpapakain ka pa. Isipin mo sarili mo. That's not the that's not the Lord whispering to you. Because God wants you to be all out. If you start meeting people's needs, if you step too far out of your bondage, that's what the enemy hates. You'll start to feel your freedom if you start feeding the hungry, ministering to the broken. That's too far for the devil. But today, Will you really allow the enemy to stop you and limit you? Or will you decide, I will go as far as what God wants me to. As far as God would want me to, I will go. I will go to the new season of my life. I will take a move. Indeed, this is a move. Amen. Because if you really, if you are just doing ministry, that's okay. But if you are being the ministry, the enemy is threatened because that's too much like Jesus' ministry. You start seeking the, seeing the sick people. You start feeding the hungry. You start talking about people, caring about them, about their emotional needs. That's just too far. The enemy will tell you, I'll let you go. But don't pay. Don't go too far. But today, decide, I will go as far. Amen. The fourth thing that the enemy does not want us to go too far to, discipleship. He doesn't want people to be educated in their faith or knowledgeable about the word. Let's take, let's, let's have a clear understanding. Discipleship is not merely a church program, mga kapatid. It's not a module that you follow. It's not a training that you attend. It's more than that. Discipleship is about doing life together. Discipleship is about sharing. Discipleship is about talking. It's about communication. This, this is, that, that, that is how Jesus did discipleship to his disciples, right? He didn't make them go to attend classes or, or attend seminars or so. I'm not saying that seminars and trainings are not good because we need to have it. But discipleship goes beyond it. Discipleship is about sharing life, learning the word together. The enemy can allow you to go to your to your Sunday, to your Friday service, to your to your midweek service. You can stay there for an hour, be in the online for, for two hours, let's say. But the enemy does not want you to go deeper. The enemy doesn't want you to be discipled, and the enemy does not want you to disciple. The enemy does not want you to carry people farther with God than the devil wants them to go. Amen. The enemy is telling you, disciple, disciple, sa lang sa oras yan. But no, starting today, decide. I'm moving forward with discipleship. In my new season, I will take discipleship seriously. Amen. And lastly, 
what is the, what is the, that that area in life that the enemy wants us to stop from going too far to worship amen the enemy will tell you sure sing as long as it's just a song sing as long as it's just a form and it lacks power sing as long as it's just words and not of significant meaning sing as long as it's just for the show and not really directed heavenward you can sing but not really worship are you just really singing or are you worshiping because you can put a face huh? you can put a face that you feel the song but you just feel the song but not who the song is for you may even cry because of the song but not of the leading of the holy spirit and you think you're too spiritual right now i'm singing i'm crying but when god checks the heart are you really worshiping or are you just singing and putting up a show the enemy enjoys that Yung tumitingin siya, oh grabe yun. Tindi-tindi magsimba, pero yan, akin yan. Yan, kumakanta lang yan, di yan nag-worship. Yan, umiiyak yan. Pero hindi yan umiyak para sa Panginoon. Natouch lang yan sa kanta. They're not going too far. The enemy is victorious when that happens. Amen. Because true worship... When there's true worship, the Lord inhabits that. In Psalm 22 verse 3, it says, But you are holy, O you that inhabits the praises of Israel. That when there's true worship, the presence of the Lord will come down and there will be an encounter. There will be an intimacy. Amen. You know what the enemy wants? For you to keep it superficial. The nice songs, a little clapping, a little jumping, but not really worship not really genuine worship because when you really worship genuinely that's just too far for the enemy if you really start worshiping someone might just get delivered someone might, someone might just get free from the bondages of sin if you truly worship someone might just have a victory if you truly worship satan doesn't want that so satan can allow you to go sing but not worship but break free from that right now step out of that that's just too near egypt that's too near sin that's too near the land of the enemy go as far the moment you worship there will be deliverance the moment you worship there will be heavenly victories the moment you worship strongholds are broken because real worship opens the heaven's window Real worship will break the chains and bondages. Real worship will bring about a victory that cannot be taken away by the enemy. Real worship will liberate a slave and cause the man in bondage to breathe free. The enemy will once again tell you, just sing. But don't really worship. Another form of worship is giving our tithes and offering. We always say this. Worship is not just about the song. Worship is about, is about giving God praise, giving God the glory. And one way that we can do it, to, when we can do it is through our tithes and offering. Again, there was another negotiation made by the enemy in Exodus chapter 10. In verse 24 and 25, let me read. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Your little, your little ones may also go with you. Take note, this time, the Pharaoh is allowing the little ones to go already. Only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. If the devil can just if the devil could just let us go, let, let can just leave our stuff behind, then he has us. He can tell us, go worship, bring your family, but don't bring your flocks. At this point, what does a flock mean? We can go to every service, including the Bible study, but we do not use our possession to advance the kingdom of Jesus. Then the enemy is still winning. 
Are you using your resources? Are you using your finances, your skills, your abilities, your intellect to further God's kingdom? Are you involved in the ministry? Because if not, maybe, just maybe, that is the enemy telling you don't go too far. We pile up money in the bank, but do not really put it to work for the salvation of souls. Ang nakakalungkot minsan mas mas may tiwala pa tayo sa bangko kaysa sa Panginoon. Mas naibibigay pa natin yung ating resources sa bangko para mag-impok, pero wala pala tayong iniimpok sa Panginoon. If the devil can get to think us that way, he has us just where he wants us. He wants us to just be not so far. As I close, always remember the children of Israel were not under Pharaoh's limits. Even though Pharaoh will say you cannot, even though their situation looks like as if they are limited, but their freedom has already been spoken in heaven. And Pharaoh cannot do anything about it. But the Israelites must decide to encourage, to take that step of faith to say, we will go. We will go. We will go as far as God wants us to. You cannot stop us. You will tell the enemy right now, you cannot stop us from going too far. Maybe the enemy has been holding you for so long, but today decide to let go. And I declare that by the grace of Jesus Christ, whatever is stopping you from going as far as God wants you to be cut off right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God wants us to go into evangelism without a fear of hesitation. God wants us to go into fellowship, rejecting the superficial fellowship and clinging to the deeper relationship that changes lives. God wants us to go into ministry, doing it excellently. Not just doing ministry, but being the ministry. Let us go into discipleship. It's our job to make disciples. Let us go into worship, not just the shallow singing of songs, but the genuine heart of worship because it's what the Lord will look at. Let us go into worship, bringing our resources that could advance the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Don't listen to the enemy when he tells you don't go too far. Because today, you will decide to go as far as what God as far as how God wants you to go. Amen. Because in that place is your new season. In that place, there awaits liberty, deliverance, and freedom. So don't stay in a place called not very far. Amen. Shall we be praying? Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for reminding us, O Lord, that you have given us the authority to trample the works of the enemy. Thank you for reminding us, O Lord, our original design, that we are made to rule over, to have dominion. Thank you for reminding us that we are a threat to the enemy. And so right now, we put on that anointing, we put on that authority, Almighty God, that Lord, we shall not be afraid of the enemy anymore, and we shall not allow the enemy to limit us, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not allow the enemy enemy's voice, Lord God, to command us to not go far because today we will go as far as how you want us to go. We will go as far as you command and direct us to go because we know that in your instruction there is anointing. In your instruction there is power, O oh Lord. And so right now, by the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I decree any spirit that is holding anyone down right now be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke right now any forms right now of, of holding back in any areas of our life. May it be in this evangelism. May it be in discipleship. May it be in fellowship. May it be in worship. May it be, Lord God, in any areas, Lord God, where there is holding back. We declare freedom right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know in you we have victory. In you, Lord God, we will be all out because we want to love you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our soul and with all of our strength because you deserve the best in our lives. We honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Always remember, go as far as God wants you to. Don't allow the enemy to speak to you. And always be reminded, also be reminded of our online anniversary on March 5, 2021. Come join us online and we shall be all together going into the new season of our lives. May God bless you. God bless your family. See you all next time.